Hey there, happy Thursday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So tonight we are working again on the uh, Granny Square Quilt quilt label. We are embroidering it. Uh, we do have the quilt labels now available uh, and uh, uh, like pre-printed and also PDF. We asked or someone mentioned um, doing it as a PDF last night and we cranked it out today. So that's now available as well if you guys wanted to play with the quilt labels. Uh, and we're back on Facebook. <laughs> we wrestled all morning uh, with Facey Pages and got it working again. Ugh. We made it though. <laughs> so hello everyone popping in over there. Um, so all right, uh, just to let everyone else or just let everyone know again, uh, I'm not going to be here tomorrow or Monday. Uh, Monday since it's Halloween and tomorrow we're going to visit my family. So we'll be on the road. So I will be back uh, Tuesday after this. So we may not actually, we will not actually be getting this done on the completed date that we wrote on, but we'll get it done <laughs> eventually here. We'll get it. All right, let's get stitching. Okay, so thanks again all for popping in. I'm glad we got all the silliness fixed. Oh, all right, there we go. And we left off, we were doing teal in the middle. So we, these are the colors that we chose for this. Uh, the inside is this emerald. The middle, we are doing this teal to kind of match the teal of the quilt. And then the outside line, we are doing that blue, which was the color of the year uh, two years ago. So, uh, um, so that is the plan for tonight. All right, so we're continuing with the teal blue. So this quilt was based on the color of the year for 2020 <laughs> when we started it. And it was that really rich kind of pretty blue. Um, and whoop, getting it out here. And then uh, we didn't have a lot of that color. So we added the teal and then the Kona color was um, the green, so that emerald green color. All right, so let's grab the two ends here. Hey, Cassie, thanks for popping in. All right, we're doing that loop method of stitching again, just because I like it. It's easy and fast, and that's kind of what I was going for with this. All right, and uh, I'm gonna just loop it around my last stitch here. So I need to finish this stitching around here, and then we're also gonna do the um, wrap around it. So we're gonna do a wrapped back stitch. And I'm just gonna loop behind these stitches that already exist. And there we go. And then we will continue with the back stitch. All right, so thank you again, everyone, for popping in. It is nice seeing everyone again. All right. And uh, yeah, I think we'll get to that dark blue color today. It will take a little time to do the whipped part, but we'll get it. Uh, Cassie, I don't. I just noticed that here. I'm going to, Cassie, I'm going to turn you into a mod. I think that's a thing, right? <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to do that. But no. Um, I stopped those couple that came in, but let's see. Hold on a sec. Mm -hmm. No, okay. I guess I'll have, to, I'll have to do that later. Don't know quite how to do that. <laughs> you can't see, I'm not quite sure how to do that. Let's let's just see more. Uh, uh. Oh, Robin would be a mod. Okay. Both of you, <laughs> I have no idea how to do that right now. I thought I could just click on you guys and it would work, but 
Um, I'm gonna figure that out, and then tomorrow, or I guess I'm not gonna be on tomorrow, but but Tuesday, um, I'd love to make you guys the mods. That'd be awesome. You two are awesome for sure. I'm happy to have y'all in here. They're hitting us on um, YouTube a little already too. It's a day. <laughs> Thanks, Cassie. Yeah, so I don't quite know how to do that. I thought I could just click people and, and it would work, but um, I'll have to dig into that. Anne says, whip backstitch is my favorite. I just love the way it looks and it's fun to do. I agree. I stayed away from it for so long because I'm like, ugh, we just spent all that time to do that backstitch and now I got to do a whole nother bit to it. Um, but you're right. Like once I started doing that, I'm like, oh, this is so pretty because it does look, um, it does look like, like literally like baker's twine just kind of resting on top all perfect. I, do, I just kind of love it. It's almost like we couched down uh, actual twine. It's kind of magic because it, it completely transforms the backstitch um, into looking like com something completely different. So I like it. It's fun. Oh, Robin, thanks so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, and if you guys are just popping in, we also got the uh, um, quilt uh, quilt labels up as um, a PDF today as well. <laughs> so the group of four as as a PDF. Per requested earlier in the week, and we had some time today, and we're like, oh, let's see if we can crank that out, and it went way easier than than I was expecting. So. I'm glad to have gotten that up for you guys. Okay. My thread was being a little funny, but I think we're good. I'm going to need a whole other piece of thread, I think, before, before um, going through this. Oh, and we'll have our, our live special is going where if you order $20 or more in the shop, I will throw in a free mystery gift. Uh, so thank you guys a bunch. I'm excited to kind of make more of these labels too. It's just, they're just the right size. Um, I kind of want to make some small ones or just like some, like a big variety of them, like of sizes would be kind of fun or just like themed ones would be fun too. I think I especially like how simple this heart one is. It's just like the three lines, but you can do like whatever on those lines, um, whatever stitch, at least on these back two. It's gonna be really, really fun to uh, sew it into like that applique, that heart applique. Oh, uh, Cassie's asking, can you make labels this way for crocheted items? I don't see why not. So um, you'd make it the same way pretty much. I would think, uh, like you're making an applique basically. Um, yeah, and then I think, you know, on the inside of your piece or if you're doing a blanket or whatever, an Afghan, uh, I think you would just, you could just hand stitch, like just whip stitch around the applique when you're, when you're done. Um, and it would just be, you'd be just like, whip stitching into the yarn. <laughs> so just like all your little stitches would just be grabbing onto the yarn. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Sounds logical. Yeah, you could even like tie it on with yarn, like do some yarn ties maybe. I don't know. I do think the, you you could even do like the, where you on the back, instead of putting that scrap piece of fabric, like if we're doing that that idea that we talked about yesterday where we put in the two, um, where we have like the finished piece and then we have the, the scrap piece and we put them right sides together and we sew around and then snip that hole in the back piece, turn it right side out. Uh, that back piece could be a fusible as well. So you could, you could fuse it theoretically to the crocheted piece 
pretending that that yarn can take usable heat um, and then still stitch around it. I think that would work. Oh, Catherine says, thanks for the PDF. I struggle with labels and these are perfect. Oh, yay. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think, uh, I think there's just flexibility with them. I think they're fun. Oh, cute. Lynn says, I thought I would need um, only one set of labels for my three quilts. But now I want to make labels for all my grandma's quilts. That's awesome. That's great, especially if you know, like, the story behind them and all that. Or even just, like, saying who made them. I think it's just, it's kind of the, you know, as much of a, as I hate doing them. Like, I always say uh, that, like, when I'm, like, I feel like I get done with the quilt. And I'm like, ah, dang it. I still have the label to do. Boo. Uh, so I'm always like annoyed because in my head, I'm done with the project. But then I forget like, oh, I should do a label. But really, when you see an old quilt, when you see a label on it, that's kind of the best part, right? It's like a real history of, of the piece on there. Like the maker or, you know, person talking about it you know, are, can just, like, their words are right there, like, the maker, it's just kind of cool. Yep, Lynn, uh, we got the labels available as a PDF now as well. We, we did that today and got it up. That was way faster than I thought we'd be able to get to that, so I'm, I'm happy. All right, definitely not making it to the end here. Let's, um, this will be my last stitch. But you know what? Uh, I can start the whip part with the same thread uh, that I get finished with. So that'll be good. This teal is so pretty. Okay. Um, look at little scissors. Boop. All right. We just have, oh, we're going to have to ha cut a whole nother piece of thread for this, um, for that whip. Oh, wait, no, maybe not. I have three pieces left. I'm like, dang, we only have two pieces left. And I'm pulling one of them now. So we might actually have, like, the exact amount we needed. And you know what? I just have these two pieces left. I might actually just keep these two together for the whip instead of doing, oh, wait, no, but I'm starting with this. Okay, I'm going to decide once I get this far. I might just take those last two pieces and do the whipped stitch. Because I think I'll need at least that much, or about that much to go, to go around. Actually, this might make it all the way around the heart with the whip stitch. And eh, that's kind of, I think that's kind of calling it real close. So yeah, maybe I'll take the last two threads and separate them, but put them back together. Just separate them just so they're not twisted, but then put them back together um, so that the variegant is next to each other, like how I should be doing this. <laughs> but, you know, this is fine. Doing the folding method too, the loop method. But yeah, and then I'll use that for the for the whip part. So I think I am going to stop this thread. I'll weave it in when I get there, and then I'll start a whole fresh thread. Oh, Jennifer, the easiest way to find... Uh, my guess is they're in the supplies category, but the easiest way to find something on the site, if you know exactly what you're looking for, is um, to just do a search in the search bar at the top, if you type in like quilt label, like start spelling label, by the time you get to like the B, uh, the PDF and and the um, pre-printed ones should probably be there. And I do actually, I think I have links at, at in the description here, the Facebook description towards the top, both as well. All right, we're almost done with the back stitch. Then we're going to do the whipped part. So fun. And the whipped part takes like no time at all. So we'll definitely get to working on the um, outer, outer heart 
the day too. Maybe I still will bring this to my parents' house. Why not? Oh, because I was going to film it. That's why. Eh, if I have some embroidery to do yet, maybe I'll bring it to finish up the embroidery. So after today, uh, we're, you know, like I said, I'm going to be out tomorrow and then also on Monday for Halloween. Um, but Tuesday, we'll, we'll be back to working on the ABC quilt, so we won't be working on this anymore. So I might actually finish up wherever we leave off tonight on this outer heart shape. Uh, and then I want to just shoot a video of, um, like, I'll, I'll make an edited video of making this into the applique and applicating it to the piece here. I'll just do a little how-to video for that. and. Um, I'll let you guys know when that's up for sure. Because we're going to be back on the ABC quilt and, and won't be working on this again. So uh, ABC quilt on, on starting on Tuesday. Ooh, I'm going to have to do a forward stitch here, I think. Um, will be the letter S. We're that far already into it. Uh, the letter S. And uh, then the week after. Oh, the S is the seahorse. And then the week after is letter T, which is the turtle. It'll also be new embroidery of the month time too. So we'll have November's embroidery all ready to go right after Halloween. Dang, then we're in Thanksgiving world and all that already. Sheesh. It's gonna be 2023 soon. Uh, will you do all the text in the back stitch? Catherine, I don't think I'm going to do anything to the text. Uh, I was kind of toying with the idea of maybe stitching the large piece. And if I get real ambitious, maybe I'll do that. But <laughs> I kind of don't see that happening. Uh, I did, let me grab the pen. I did write it out with, um, oh, let me show the process again. This is where we started. I was just kind of like, I traced the heart from here and that was like my area to work. And then we just sketched out some ideas and wrote out some things and we had to make it smaller. So I wrote it like smaller in a few places. Uh, so we just kind of figured it out on paper here. And then I traced it onto here with um, one of these Micron pens. So th these are those archival permanent uh markers that are really thin like look this is a size zero one uh, i think this is the size that we carry in the shop but it is so thin and uh, that's how i got like just the really nice lines and this should stay permanent so even if it goes through the wash a bunch of times it should be good um and even if it starts fading after like a thousand washes or something like that uh it's not going to just creep up on you so you can just you could just like go over it again with the marker but i haven't had to do that ever but yeah, so I might just leave it as is because that's so much type. I just, uh, I wanted this quick, quick and done. All right, I'm going with my, my last two pieces. I am separating them just so it's not so twisty, but then I am going to put them back together in the exact same way. Um, so we should theoretically see a little bit of, a, of, a, of the variegation when we do this whip, but the variegation in this, this teal is so like subtle that I'm not sure it'll, we'll even really, really see it. You can see the variegation a little bit in this emerald. You can see like the, it's a little darker there and it's a little lighter here. And even with this teal, or I mean, I think with the, the dark blue, we'll see it a little bit more, but you can see it the most in this, this green. But we'll see, let's see if we can, see if it pops with the little variegation in this teal. Amy's asking, does it need to be heat set? I don't think so. Because um, you, you can use these for art making and, and other things like on paper and stuff. It doesn't say, like it's not meant ultimately for fabric, but it works like super duper well. It just says uh, micro pigment ink for waterproof and fade proof fine lines. Uh, and it's archival, which isn't as important for fabric because it's going to be washed and all that. But like for paper, it, it means it's just like it's not going to like 
there's the chemical or whatever it's made up of is not going to like drill through your fabric. Like it's not going to start deteriorating your fabric or anything like that. And we've, we have a label, a couple labels that we've washed a zillion times and uh, um, it's fine. We haven't seen any fading really. And like I said, if it does fade a little, it won't be quick and you'll notice it. And there would be time to just kind of right over the top of it again. If need be. But yeah, we've, we've had quilts for years that we can still see all the type on. All right, so weaving in the end. Got the little funny end there I'm going to get. Okay. So this is it for this teal color, but this is, I think, plenty uh, length for the length of, um, oh, weird. I, have to get, I don't think I finished stitching. I get all the way back here. There we go. Okay. So the whipped for the bit whipped backstitch. I know, Kelly, where did October go? We blinked. Exactly. It's crazy town. Um, Shark is asking, do I have to wash the string before you embroider? No. So for a good quality embroidery floss, it should be color fast. So sometimes it's not. And um, there's kind of tricks if the, if the ink bleeds a little bit, there's some tricks to get it out. Um, like you can try like a Tide pen or vinegar or like putting like color catchers in the wash. Uh, those are those like, what brand does that again? It's a common, I mean, you can find it at grocery store. It's so that, you know, your colors stay nice in the wash. Um, but yeah, a good floss, you shouldn't have to deal with that. And yeah, you don't want to wash it beforehand. You're going to end up with like a, a crazy mess of knots, I think. All right, so we are doing the whipped part of the whipped back stitch now. So I came up just at the beginning. So I think at both of these points, we'll, we'll like stop stop um, the whip at the point so we can keep the nice points and then we'll start it up again. So I'm going to stay on uh, the same side to do this. So I'm always going to start on the inside of the heart and go to the outside of the heart. So I'm going to slide my needle underneath that first stitch. So I'm not even going into the back of the fabric or anything. I'm just going underneath that stitch from the inside to the outside. And that's it. Then I'm going to go to the next stitch inside of the heart to the outside. There we go. And I'm just going to keep going around and around. So this looks like super duper cute uh, if you do a different color for the whip. But we're sticking to this teal this time. If you do a different color, it really, really looks like like a twisted baker's twine. Like, you know, you could do like a red and white would be really pretty. Uh, it's really subtle, but you can see it here. It looks just a little bit, it doesn't look like a backstitch anymore. It almost looks like a piece of like twisted thread that you laid out perfectly on your, on your piece. So it, it completely changes the look of the backstitch. So it's just a fun extra touch. It, it really is looking refined though, too. It looks just like a nice, solid, clean line now. And it's a little thicker. Uh, which I, I like because um, the next line we're going to do as a chain stitch and that'll be even thicker. So it's like we've, like we're adding more and more bulk to the lines as we go outward. I'm just going to keep turning this so it's easiest for me to pull through. So it's a fun extra touch to add to your back stitch. And like I said, with a different color, it really, really looks cool. Oh yeah, for sure. Ka Catherine's saying, yes, I had trouble with fading, which I can redo, but I give most of the quilts away, most of the quilts. So that's why I like embroidery. I, I, yeah, that's, I agree with that too, for sure. But nope, this one I'm gambling. I'm just gonna let it, let it be with the micron pen. Um. Too much to stitch for me right now. We have stitched like this much before, but ugh. like I said, I'm in the mode of like, let's get this guy done. 
So that would be a whole lot more to do. Oh, this looks so clean and refined. It really, really is pretty. I, I really like that stitch. I'll have to try and take a, like a photo, like a close-up photo of it. Especially next to the running stitch, which is the green, because that's like the simplest and most like basic of like outline-y stitches. So to have like this really pretty whipped back stitch next to it, I think is pretty cool. I kind of feel like I'm going to run out of this thread, but, but I don't know. I feel like it was long enough. Ooh, this is tough on the shoulder though, man. Let's, let's get them done. But there we go. I got a little bit better now. Yeah, so I don't I don't think it needs to be heat set the the ink at all, but I will like inherently be heat setting it because um like when we turn this into an applique, I'm sure I'll press it just to make sure all the corners and everything. Oh, the sister of Doom says it looks like it will be close. So I do have it folded over a little bit, so I can make it a little longer. But even even so, I'm like, oh, this is kind of using a little bit more than I was expecting it to. All right, we're almost halfway with it, though. So once I get to the point here, I'm going to go into um, into the back again. All right, this is getting kind of twisty. I'm just trying to untwist it a little bit. Uh, Cassie says, does the PDF label come with instructions? It doesn't come with embroidery instructions. Um, it's just I it's just the the line art basically, and uh, I have it in a traceable format and then reversed for, you know, if you were using some sort of iron-on um, ink or something like that. Uh, so it's basically just a design that can be, be traced. But you can enlarge it or shrink it to any size you want. That's kind of the benefit of a PDF, or if you're just in a place that shipping is expensive. Um, but like the PDF, what's nice is because you can make a real little label if you only want you know, if you want to do a heart, but like a lot smaller because you only have a little bit of information or you just want to be like to whoever from me, um, then you don't need that much. So that's that's why I like the PDFs. So it's basically just a design you can print out and trace onto the fabric or whatever, whatever you're using. All right, I am, that was my last whip and now I'm going to go into this um, bottom point. And now I actually want to come up in the bottom point and uh, um, start doing the whip for the other side. But I can't just come back up through that hole because I just went down through that hole. So if I come back up, it'll just come out. So what I'm gonna do to, to trick this into having that work is I'm gonna go around one of the nearby stitches, just underneath like that. And now I can go back through that exact same hole and it's not gonna, my thread's not gonna come back out because I looped it under um, another stitch. And now I can come back up at this bottom again. There we go. And now I can finish the other side of this heart. Ugh, it looks so pretty. It's like a little cording. Okay, let's make this a little longer, but I think it's going to be closer than I thought still as far as how much thread I have left. I'm glad I did it this way with this whole big long piece instead of trying to do it in half. So I can kind of tell the blue or the teal got a little darker here and it's a little lighter. So there's a teeny, 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 teeny tish of that variegation in the thread. Super subtle. Like if we would have used um, one of the other colors that has like a lot of variegation or that like that variegates from one color to another, a whole nother color, um, we would have been able to see that for sure. But, but these colors, these base colors were just matched the you know the original concept of the quilt so much that couldn't turn those down they just have a little less variegation in them getting all twisty here yeah 
annoying. It's just, so I'm just letting it dangle. So some stitches twist up your yarn, your thread more than others. And it's usually ones where you're making the same motion, like this one, I'm making the same motion over and over again. So technically I'm like twisting it each time I, I do a stitch. So it's just getting twistier and twistier. Um, so that means I have to untwist it or let it dangle every once in a while. Whereas other stitches you stitch and it's not, you're not getting that twisting motion with the stitch. So those ones you don't have to untwist as much or they don't like knot up as much or anything. And I'm so happy we got facey pages working again. That was a nightmare and a half. That was like at least an hour of rabbit hole shenanigans dealing with that today. But I think we got it, got it all squared. So that's about time. Oop, I think, oh no, I got, I went through both. I thought I only went um, underneath one, one of the threads there, but I got them both. Ooh, I think now, now that I'm this far, I think we have enough loss. I wasn't sure when we were a little earlier. All right, well, we're about to start the last um, outline here. And maybe I'll do it a reverse back stitch just because that's more relaxing. <laughs> so I want I'm doing a or not not back stitch, a reverse chain stitch. So I'm doing a chain stitch for the outside line. Um but I'm gonna do the reversed chain stitch version just because it's easier and it's actually very similar to what I'm doing now. So I feel like all of these lines are like graduating to the next the next line, actually. Uh because the reverse chain stitch, you actually just kind of go underneath stitches like this. And I'll show you that in a sec here. A few more stitches left. Oh, it's a little kind of easier going this way. Uh, three more. One, two. There we go. So well, that's our last whip. It looks pretty even and nice. Ugh, it just looks like cording just sitting on top there. I love it. All right, and now we got to bring it to the back. So I'm going into that beginning point. There we go. And just weaving it in and we're done. That color is finished. That border is done. Ugh, I really like my steel. Okay, and we used up all the thread for that too, all the six strands, so I don't even have to like wind up any extra on, um, well, I mean, I guess this is a little extra. Maybe I'll wind this um, to the rest of the thread. Yeah, this is a good enough amount to work with. All right, well, let's move on to the blue. Uh, so this is our outer color. This is like closest to that color of the year color for, for 2020. Um, all right, and reverse chain stitch we wanted to do. So let's get, let's see, do I want to do the, yeah, we're going to go through it. I'm going to do the, the folding method again, the um, loop method of starting. It's just more relaxing. Um, it's actually kind of hard to do the loop method to start for the chain stitch. Oh wait, but we're doing a reverse chain stitch. So actually I think it's gonna work well. Okay, so I need to make my thread the double length. So my 24 inches or so that I like working with, but like twice, so times two, I'm just folding it in half. And about right there. I'm gonna just grab one thread. We're only stitching with two strands of thread and I'm getting the two strands by only taking one and then folding it in half. Okay, there we go. Which means that our, that the variegation isn't lining up of the two strands because when I fold this up, this variegation, you know, of the thread is color of the thread is gonna be different than this side. But uh, like with these other ones, the, the variegation is so subtle that 
I think who cares and it'll be just a little like mixed together which I think will be kind of pretty too. Okay. So for a reverse chain stitch, we kind of start with what would normally be the end of our row. But since we're doing it in reverse, it's going to be the start of our row. Oops, I missed just this side. It was looking a little fuzzy. Didn't quite get it in there. Okay, there we go. So I am going to, let's start at the top again. I should start at the bottom for this one. Just because I think you're going to see, you're going to see this stitch a little. Now nah, I'm starting at the top. That's where I started for all the other ones. So I'm going to make a tiny stitch. This would be what would normally anchor our last stitch down, but I'm making it beforehand. So it's just an itty bitty stitch, like just a couple line or like threads of the fabric big and I'm actually going to come to the back and loop my um, thread through here again and then so I that's what's securing my thread is that loop but now I'm going to come up and make my first stitch so about a stitch length away and I'm going to put my thread, I'm going to like get my thread underneath that anchor stitch that we just made, that tiny, tiny little stitch. I'm just like scooping underneath. I'm not going to the back. So the same thing as what we did with the whip stitch or the whipped back stitch. I'm just going to go underneath there, tighten it up again. And now I'm going to go back in the exact same hole from here. From this second stitch and I'm not going to pull super tight so that's what gives us our little cute little teardrop shape and that is our first uh, chain stitch here for the reverse chain stitch method and you'll see how this is relates to the whip back stitch real quick here so I'm coming up here so now I just have to swoop underneath all the stitches of that last stitch come out the other side and then go back down in that same hole we came up in and if I make sure to like leave it loose don't pull too tight then you'll get that nice teardrop shape so that is our second chain and now we just gotta keep doing that so coming up for the next stitch swooping underneath the last stitch and then going back into that hole that's a reverse chain stitch it's I think it's relaxing there's not as much red flying all over the place. So we're going to just chill and see how far we can get this back stitch done. Ooh, thanks, Grace. Grace says, uh, safe travels to my parents tomorrow. Yep, that's the plan. So Wanda says, hello everyone, love the whipped back stitch. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I've done it without it being two colors before. Like usually I like doing the whip part in a in a second color. Cause it's just like a candy cane then. It's like a like baker's twine. Like it just really does look exactly like pretty baker's time twine uh sitting up there. Um but yeah, so this with the same color, it just looks like a nice solid like cording sitting up like almost as if we took like a pearl cotton thread and magically were able to get it to lay perfectly on our piece somehow like we glued it down perfectly that's that's kind of what it looks like which is fun i think so i'm just holding this in a position that feels easiest for me to swoop swoop underneath just holding it with my thumb just to Keep it in place for that second half of the stitch. I'm actually kind of making these a bit smaller than I usually make chain stitches. Usually a little greedy, I get a little bit bigger on the chain stitches. But I think that whip back stitch just looks so cute and delicate. I, I'm making making them about the same sizes as that. Whoop. 
we're gonna go through a bunch of floss for for this back stitch though it it eats it up these three colors are looking so pretty to, together though next to each other uh it really i think is representing this quilt um so i'm happy about that dark teals and greens and all of it This is what's going to take some time though. So we'll we'll work on this until um, we're done here tonight, which is like 9.30ish, so about 20 more minutes. And uh, then that's it for this project for a little again. I'm going to try and finish it on my own and, and film it. So I can do like a, a little edited how-to on how to uh, turn this into an applique and stitch it onto the um the back of the quilt but i'll probably do that like i said on my own just because otherwise we won't be able to work on this again till the end of november like when we have a free week then but that's gonna get all twisted into holidays and stuff too so you know from here to like january uh our free weeks are gonna be kind of question marks right um Oh, who's, who mentioned that? I missed, I missed the comment. Hold on. Someone has a new nephew. Oh, Catherine does. Oh, Catherine, I have a great, great nephew who was born today. Oh, congrats. I made a rocket baby quilt. Oh, dang, that sounds cute for him. And his heart label will look so cute on it. Oh, love that. Dang, a rocket ship quilt. That sounds amazing. Congrats, that's very nice. This blue is so pretty. Uh, Cassie says this looks so much easier than regular chain stitch. Spoiler, it is. <laughs> it really is. Uh, and the reason I think is because you don't have to like make that like loop with your thread and trying to like you don't have to go like this and then like trying to get up in in the circle this really is more relaxing i don't think it's as common like it's if 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 an old pro at embroidery <laughs> you know who is gonna be the embroidery police um they'd probably say no you gotta do the other way but i i don't know i i find this way a lot more relaxing. Theoretically, it takes longer uh, because you do have to do a couple motions, whereas in the normal chain stitch, you wouldn't have to do, you'd just be doing like one motion theoretically. Oh, I think I lost my thread. Okay, good, I didn't. Felt my pinky get in there. Um, but yes, uh, I would actually recommend doing, like trying this um, type of um, the reverse chain stitch if you're doing chain stitches. Uh, can you do your embroidery pattern on shirts or other clothes? Definitely. So it's not easier though. So stitching on clothing, especially if it's like knit clothing, which would be t-shirts and sweatshirts and all that is like a really tight knit fabric. It's so stretchy. Um, it can be pretty difficult. So, uh, um, a stabilizer on the back would be helpful, like a like a fusible stabilizer to kind of hold all that stretch in place. Um, and then really on a, a T, I mean, it's definitely doable. Um, if you're stitching something that it's really hard to get to the back, like let's say you're stitching a sleeve of a sweatshirt or something. That would be really difficult, like this part where I'm going to the back of the design and then having to come up again. Um, that's That'd be pretty difficult, like I said, if you're doing like a sleeve of a sweatshirt. So what I would recommend in that case is doing, using stitches that use the sewing method really well. And remember the sewing method, I mean, I don't think I can do it with, oh, I might be able to do it with this. So the sewing method is where you never really have to go to the back. So let's see if I can do that. So I'm gonna swoop under here 
And uh, for the sewing method, I would have to go down and then up right away to my next stitch. So I'm gonna go down where that stitch ends and then I'm gonna go up right where the next stitch should start. And then you can pull through. And if you're doing that sewing method, you're kind of always on top of your, your piece. So if you're, like I said, doing something tricky like the sleeve of a sweatshirt, uh, trying to do, trying to use that sewing method. And some stitches, I'm gonna do it again here. Some stitches work a little bit better than others for that. Uh, but yeah, I would recommend practicing that sewing method and do it again, just in and out. But yes, general, uh, to answer your question there, yes, you can uh, uh, do embroidery on shirts and, and other stuff. But yeah, just um, that sort of stuff is just a hair trickier than just tightly woven fabric like this. I think we're actually getting pretty far on this chain stitch. I'm almost out of red though. So I think um, maybe one more stitch after this and I'll weave it in and start a new, new piece. So let's see, we got over like the hump here. Eh, we're probably still gonna need at least four pieces. Four different times doing it, but ugh, that blue is so freaking pretty. It's looking cute. All right, so there we are. Oh, my stitches are getting bigger. Now they're getting more of my normal size stitches. I did start them a little bit smaller than I usually stitch, which I don't know. I was just doing that whipped back stitch and I was kind of doing it the same as that. So they're, they're itty bitty here and then they get a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger. So. Maybe I'll try and even it out again to be in the middle, more in the middle like here. I see a little bit of a variegant. It's getting a little darker here, a little lighter here. So we still have a little bit of texture in the color. All right, so I'm weaving in the backs again here and we'll start up. I don't think we have time to get going with the next, the next thread. I don't think we'll get very far before we're done here. Definitely started. Ooh, now I'm feeling like, yay, now this quilt is almost gonna be really finished, officially finished. <laughs> the real label. This is actually getting me excited to do more labels. And like I keep saying like, ah, the quilt's done. Now I gotta do a stupid label for it. Boo, I want it to be done. Uh, that's my, my general feeling when I do quilts <laughs> and then remember that like, oh crap, I should do a label. But I'm excited about this. This is looking cute and, I could see, like now I wanna do more labels for, for oops, I tied this in a knot, that was silly. Um, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna definitely, I don't know, maybe be a little bit more excited about this in the future, this stage. All right, zoop. Oh gosh, it's a little long to pull those threads out like that. They wanna get a little tangled at the end, but we got it. All right, I'm doubling it up again. Oh, she's coming off that nail too. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to do my nails again. I was hoping this would go three weeks, these nails, but ooh, they just might be looking rough next week. <laughs> so, oh well. All right, I'm gonna do the loop method. I'm just gonna go underneath stitches that already exist on the back, and then I'm gonna go through that loop, and boop, we're, we're held down tight, ready to get started again. Okay, and the nice thing with the reverse chain stitch Two is we can just come up and start right away again. Just come up and we just continue going underneath. I'm going this way again. It doesn't matter what side, you, like, you know, you can go underneath this side or you can go underneath from this side. It's gonna look exactly the same. I'm just doing what's, what's more comfortable. Like kind of like holding um, the edge with my left hand and being able to feel the stitches. And so that makes it easier for me to go like inside of the outside. Just like how we did the whip stitch. Oh, yay! Uh, Kathy said that I just ordered the ST and, uh, is that the L or, or I PDFs? Q! I'm excited. 
Um, that'll be fun. I think the seahorse is just silly and cute. Uh, I think I would like to make him a different color, though. The original is that bright yellow. I suppose we'll have to see, see what colors we have left again. We're trying to work through those colors. We've been kind of doing rainbow everything. I was just thinking, ooh, a rainbow a seahorse would be cute, but <laughs> we've been like... Our, all our, like, the, you know, three of our last ones were last, like, three out of the last, like, four or five. We've done rainbow something. So maybe, maybe not on this next one. Oh, you're right. Catherine says I could do a specialty label for the Splendid Sampler, too. Dang, I'm not even thinking about that yet. We got a ways to go on that project. Oh, normally we do that for, like, a day or two um, in our free week. I forgot about that. Oh, we're gonna have to do like just a marathon of that, that project. And <laughs> actually just thinking about that, doing a marathon of that Splendid Sampler 2 project, we would still barely get any done. <laughs> we could maybe get a couple blocks done or, you know, we could assemble some of that quilt as you go. Then that would feel like we got a lot done, but dang, yeah, that project has a lot to go yet. Oh, Amy says, I vote one strand of orange and one strand of brown for um, the seahorse. So like like mixed, so, so you'd have like a twist of both of those colors together. I think we did that for the koala and that looked pretty cute. Yeah, I'd be down for that. That sounds cute. Old and, and uh, probably way more close to nature than the little yellow one that I did. We just have a few more minutes here, but I am having fun. These are relaxing, just these little reverse chain stitches. I'm glad we did it this way. A little less fumbly. And actually, I think my stitches are a little bit more consistent in shape and everything doing, doing it this way. Although I did kind of veer off. I got them all kind of, I got a puzzle. A little long and stuff there, but now they're getting all kind of teardroppy and cute again. Yeah, <laughs> Kathy's saying we could do one Saturday a month with the Splendid Sampler. Oh, you got the U as well. Awesome. Um, yeah, that. We're gonna we're gonna have to do something like that soon to get that that done. Otherwise, we'll be working on that for like another three years. Like in in like, and I'm not even exaggerating. That that would be. I mean, what are we at? We got like twenty three or twenty four or so. God, maybe even like twenty five blocks yet to do on that. Then plus all the quilting and all of the. We're doing that quilt as you go as well. That was the first project I've tried quilt as you go on. And uh, yeah, we gotta do all the assembly of that quilt stuff too. I haven't done any of the rows together, I don't think. So we got all those long, like binding size um, rows to put together, but that'd be really fun. I enjoy that. But yeah, that's, that's got a little ways to go yet. But. We're further than we were, so there's that. Not giving up on it. We're gonna get it done. And I enjoy working on it. It's just these some of these quilts are mega marathons. That's why I like throwing in a little bit of embroidery for some quick wins. Ugh, I'm still loving this freaking blue. It's making me like like the quilt again. I mean, not that I don't like the quilt, but uh, it's making me remember liking the colors while working on it in this quilt. Oh, Jessica's asking, how often am I live and when? Oh, you just found me. Oh, loving the stream. Well, I'm super happy to have you here. I'm here, uh, except for it's a little varied um, the next few days, but typically I'm here Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and I'm here for about an hour. So uh, 8.30 to 9.30 Central Time. Uh, Monday through Friday. However, t 
tomorrow I'm not going to be here because I'm traveling and Monday I'm not going to be here because I'm traveling slash it's Halloween. <laughs> uh, so I, I let I let people know if I'm not going to be here unless there's like a technical snafu. Um, but yeah, so every evening, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central. And we embroider and, you know, quilt and sew and um, a lot of embroidery this year because we're working on an embroidered quilt. Uh, we always have our embroidery of the month, the third week of the month. All right, you guys, we finished half of this. So I'm at that point again, right, where I'm kind of changing what I'm doing. So I'm going to go into the back here. And now... Again, theoretically, to start that next stitch, I got to actually come up. Oh, wait, no, that would be for a normal. That would be for a not reverse chain stitch. So actually, I can just come up. Forgot I'm doing a reverse chain stitch. So there's going to be a little bit of an extra bit that I'm going to do right here, but I'm going to come up. And I'm going to swoop around this last stitch, just exactly how I've been doing it. But since this is such a big angle change, what's going to happen is this stitch is going to want to fall. It's going to want to swoop down like it's see like this. It's going to want to fall down the stitch when I want it like attached up there. So what I got to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to come back up and add like a little anchor stitch there. So kind of like how I would finish a row um, if I was doing just a forward chain stitch, or if I'm, you know, doing a lazy daisy stitch, how you have to like tack it down. So right here, I'm gonna tack it down just so it stays down and pointy like that. So it doesn't slide up, slide up that last stitch. So we're attached now, that's not gonna move. And then I can just come back up and continue on the chain stitch. So I, I would just swoop under there and be going on the next stitch, but, I think we're about done for the evening. So I'm gonna just let that sit on my needle miner. I can get like a few more stitches out of here. Uh, and uh, I, will, I'll, I will do that. So I'm gonna actually finish the rest of this on my own. Um, like I said, because next week we'll be working on the, the ABC quilt again. But I will videotape how I turn this into an applique and sew it onto the quilt. So I will do a video on that. And if I don't have time to do any of that stuff, maybe I will pick this back up live and we'll just finish it live together. Um, Momo, this is a reverse chain stitch. So um, a chain stitch would be the common way to learn how to do, to do it. It looks like a little, it looks like, you know, almost like a crocheted chain stitch, uh, which I just love. Um, but this is, this, in particular, where I swoop underneath like this, it's it's a reverse chain stitch. Oh, thanks, Jessica. Yep, so I guess, yeah, let's just call it there. So yeah, so I will definitely um, let everyone know. Oh, here, let me flip you around. I'll definitely let everyone know when I have that video of the applique done. And like I said, if I just don't get to any of that, then, <laughs> then we'll just end up doing this live again. Uh, but I am hoping to actually get it done. So we didn't quite finish it on the October 28th, like how I have on there. That would have been tomorrow. But, you know, we lost a day here or there. <laughs> uh, so, anywho, um, I'll try and finish this on my own. And um, it'll just be a couple days later than that, that completed date that we said. No biggie. So, awesome, you guys. Uh, thanks again for joining me here. I will leave the um, that special open for another 15 minutes. And that's... That's uh, if you order, it's our live special. So if you order $20 in the shop at penguinandfish.com, uh, I will throw like within the, during the live or within the next like 15 or minutes or so, I will throw in a free mystery gift for you. So you don't have to add it to your cart or anything. I will just plop it in there. Uh, so thanks again, everyone. Uh, I will see you again on Tuesday. So have a happy Halloween as well. <laughs> All right. Good night, you guys. Bye.